you should start by remembering that Allah Azza wa Jal does not burden a soul beyond their capability of handling. Number two, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, "Ma asaba min musibatin fil ardi wa la fi anfusikum illa fi kitab min qabl an nabraha." Not a calamity that strikes on earth or in you, except that it was recorded in a record before it was created, which coincides with the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, written everything 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. You need to remind yourself with this point as the second point in going through a, a personal self-to-self -self therapy. You need to speak to yourself about these matters. That Allah Azza wa Jal had recorded this before the creation of the heavens of, and the earth. So, uh, uh, grieving about it will not change, will not erase the, 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 the history, the past, and change it into something that's happy for you. Third point is that you need to remember that the nature of this life, and this is for all of us to remember all the time, brothers and sisters. We need to remember that the nature of this life is this. It's a place of test. It's not the place of rest. The place of rest is up there with Allah Azza wa Jal in Jannah. Only then we will rest and have no hardships. As long as we live, we will be tested by Allah Azza wa Jal. Each in accordance to his or her strength of Iman. So you need to remind yourself that things are decreed. Number two, this is the nature of life. Number three or number four, it is not always bad, even if it looks like it. Number five, and this is something that the scholars emphasized when they spoke about being tested. He said, expecting good from Allah and awaiting for relief is an act of worship that's conducted by the heart. And it is one of the loftiest act of, acts of worship a slave he or she can, do, can perform. To think good of their Lord, to expect the best of their, from their Lord, and to wait for the relief to happen. Number six, you need to remember that never, con nothing ever continues as it is. No hardship will, will continue eternally and no happiness continues eternally. Everything comes to an end. Allah Azza wa Jal fluctuates our situations like this so we don't feel, oh, it's all evil or or it's all good. One day it's good and one day it's bad. By, by day, I don't mean 24 hours. I mean, a period we'll, we'll, we'll live, we'll go through, we will go through good times. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will test us. The, the, the severity of the test may vary depending on people, as I said. So you need to remember that this is the nature of the way of Allah Azza wa Jal with us. He doesn't make us go through things everlasting, eternal. Things happen and then they come to an end. And then another turn comes for good. And then this goes in another turn for bad. We will never live in one pattern. None has happened. None has lived such a life in their lives. Not even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the best and the dearest and the most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal, he went through good days and bad days. Was he not Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beaten in Mecca? Did they not step, step on his neck with their feet? Was he not injured in Uhud? They broke his, they, they broke his jaw and he, he shed blood Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
to the extent that some of the companions thought he had died. If this happened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it can happen to any of us. And it will, and it does, and it did, and it will continue to, because this is just the nature of life, and this is the way of Allah azza wa jal with his creation. Another advice, number seven, perhaps I, for, I lost count, is dua. And don't give up. Don't say, ah, I've been asking Allah for a year now and nothing has changed. You don't put conditions on Allah when to change your life, when to ease your difficulties. You just ask Him, cry and cry and cry and have hope in His mercy until things change. Next point is that you need to remember that calamities in general befall people as a result of their shortcomings and sins. So you need to reform the relationship between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. You need to be on good terms with Allah Azza wa Jal as much as you possibly and humanly can. If, if there is something you're loose with, with regards to the commands, then be firm, do it, be punctual, on time. If there is something wrong that Allah Azza wa is commanding you not to do and you sometimes do it and sometimes don't, or sometimes abide and sometimes you don't, then you need to be adamant not to do it. Next point, is your company. You need to be very selective of the sisters whom you befriend and you uh, hang around with. And I don't mean this only in terms of them being good and righteous and practicing sisters or not. Sometimes you will have a very good brother or sister, but he is a very negative element. He does not, nothing but talk about negativeness. Oh, this life is that and this life, oh, this. And he is always or she is always complaining. Being around people who are negative and have negative uh, talks all the time causes depression to people. You need to avoid such people. Be around people who are optimistic, who are joyful, who have good relations with Allah and thus they act according to that. They expect the best from Allah Azza wa Jal and they spread this spirit amongst those around them. I hope by acting upon these uh, few points, your life will change. 